The future of our society, the theme of the Lehigh University TEDx, is largely dependent upon entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs solving problems. For example, Lehigh professor Mahesh Kuthari, through his patented technology, is providing portable oxygen therapy to patients with pulmonary disease. Entrepreneurs bringing us new tools. Lehigh alumni Chris Hall and Sean Henwood recently launched Raleigh, a new software as a service platform that allows coaches and athletes to share athletic performance data. Entrepreneurs impacting our infrastructure. Sudak Garnetti, who many of you know, is not only a Lehigh professor, but co-founder of Siwa Technologies that's making energy more affordable through concentrated solar power. And entrepreneurs helping us learn. Lehigh graduate Lisa Glover's educational Kit Rex, the lovable dinosaur that you build, is enamoring people across the country and across the world. Entrepreneurs will also impact the future of our society by volunteering their time and expertise. Randy Tuttleman, a Lehigh alumnus and entrepreneur, sits on the board of a nonprofit foundation that supports children with congenital heart disease and entrepreneurs sharing their financial success. Lehigh recently announced the $20 million gift from Scott Belair, an alum that is helping to reimagine the mountaintop campus. As we look around, many of you in the audience are or will become an entrepreneur. If not, the chances are great that in the future, you will be impacted personally by these innovative leaders. You may buy a product invented by one, you may work for one, you may do business with one. You may read a book written by one, elect one to political office, or volunteer alongside one. You may become friends with one, marry one, or even one day have a child who becomes one. Yes, the chances are great that the future of our society, the future of your life, will be impacted by the entrepreneur. But what is it that makes these individuals tick? What is it that goes on behind the scenes. To better understand these innovators of the future, we look to the past. Chances are most of you in the audience have seen the film The Wizard of Oz. This 1939 classic celebrates its 75th anniversary this year and provides the context for answering these questions. So join me as we travel down the proverbial yellow brick road, 7.5 lessons The Wizard of Oz teaches us about entrepreneurs. Lesson one, the wind began to switch, the house to pitch, and suddenly the hinges started to unhitch. As Dorothy and Toto, tucked inside their Kansas home, go spinning through the tornado and land in Oz with a thump. As Dorothy emerges, she has a very big and clearly defined problem, to get back to Kansas. Over the last 12 years, I've had the privilege of working with hundreds of student entrepreneurs. And in doing so, a common theme emerged. The most successful of those student visionaries clearly identified a problem that needed to be solved and sought out on a journey to find the solution. Which brings us to our second lesson. Know the role and limitations of your supporters. We all remember the scenes from Munchkin Land. The Munchkins were everywhere, encouraging Dorothy as she started her journey to find her solution. They sang, they danced, they cheered, they even gave her lollipops. The same is true for the entrepreneurs starting their journey. They have their own support system, their own fan club, friends and family, professors, even the media, pumping them up, boosting their confidence, encouraging them on their way. But the entrepreneur knows that those in the fan club aren't the ones to take the first step on the journey. It wasn't the munchkins that put the ruby slipper on the yellow brick road. Dorothy did that. And much like Dorothy, the entrepreneur must take that first step by themselves with their own fortitude, determination, and vision. Lesson three, find a mentor. As Dorothy progressed to the Emerald City, she benefited from the perspective of someone with more experience. Enter Glinda, the good witch. Now like any good mentor, Glinda would drop in periodically. And like any good mentor, Glinda would pro provide her student with guidance, keeping her moving in the right direction, in the right trajectory. And as many mentors have the right answer, much like Glinda, 
knew all along that Dorothy had the capability to get back to Kansas on her own. The good mentor allows their student to make mistakes along the way, relishing in the solution when they figure it out on their own. Lesson four, build a diverse team. Now over the years, I've been able to witness firsthand many student entrepreneurial teams that are quite homogenous with a limited breadth in skill set. For example, a team of three mechanical engineers over here, a team of two finance MBAs, or a team of four, yes, four medical students. We can learn from Dorothy who, over time, built a diverse team. The optimistic scarecrow, the cautious tin man, and the charismatic lion. I can almost imagine Dorothy putting her own new venture team together with one mechanical engineer, one finance MBA, and one med student, even if from different universities. Lesson five, anticipate the competition. As Dorothy Toto, the scarecrow tin man and lion eased on down the road, Glinda wasn't the only one keeping tabs on them. The Wicked Witch and her own diverse team of flying monkeys and castle henchmen were always plotting their next move. Dorothy and her comrades stood ready to respond to the competition, putting out fires such as the Tin Man did when he stomped on the fireball that the Wicked Witch threw, or infiltrating their ranks such as the Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion did when they dressed up like the castle henchmen to rescue Dorothy. The same is true for the entrepreneur as the competition is omnipresent and you must always stand ready to respond. Lesson six, this is a quick but important one. We remember how days into the journey, Dorothy and her comrades went running across the red poppy fields with the Emerald City in sight. What happened next? They were forced to press the pause button. They were forced to take a break. Now I've seen entrepreneurs work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, week after week, month after month. Work hard, but pace yourself and take a break, even if temporarily, before someone or something forces you to do so. Lesson seven, stand ready to change direction. Now Dorothy did all the right thing. She built a diverse team, she leveraged a mentor, and she anticipated the competition. She also made a very big assumption that the wizard was the solution to her problem. As Dorothy and her team members entered the land of Oz, they crept down the corridor to meet the wizard. Toto ran ahead. He ran ahead and he pulled open the curtain to reveal that the wizard was a mere mortal. The assumptions about the wizard were incorrect. Dorothy had to find another solution to her problem. Entrepreneurship is also about assumptions. Assumptions about the problem, assumptions about the solution, assumptions about the competition, assumptions about the market. And often those assumptions are proved incorrect. The entrepreneur must regroup, refocus, and redirect. So finally, to get to the 7.5 lessons on the 75th anniversary of The Wizard of Oz, a bonus half lesson. Take calculated risks and bounce back from failure. MGM took a risk in using Technicolor in a bold and creative way. As Dorothy opened the black and white doors of her Kansas home to the colorful land of Oz. One could argue that back in 1939, those risks didn't pay off as the film, nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture, didn't win. They lost. But the film reinvented itself, finding new distribution channels being shown on American television year after year, decade after decade, to become one of the most known films of all time. They didn't rest on their laurels. They came back stronger than they were before. And the same is true for the entrepreneur, taking calculated risks but learning how to refocus and regroup to become better than they even imagined in the first place. So there you have it, a whole new way to look at The Wizard of Oz. Many of you in the room will become entrepreneurs, are entrepreneurs, or will have an entrepreneur in your life. But hopefully, we've gained some insight into these creative leaders, insight you can use for your own entrepreneurial journey. Solve a problem. Know the role and limitations of your supporters. Leverage a mentor and build a diverse team. Anticipate the competition, but learn to pace yourself and take breaks along the way. 
stand ready to change direction, take calculated risks, and demonstrate resiliency as you travel down your own yellow brick road. Thank you.